What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 19. This 19. is the newest, this is the fourth iteration of our show. Yeah. Brand new set, mm. brand new intro. Same old dudes, <laughs> but we got a whole new thing going on. We hope you guys enjoyed the new uh, intro song because you know what? Mr. Rogers, he thinks you're a dick. And Mr. Rogers was a badass. Wasn't he like a sniper or something? I like don't know, that? but I know he was very, wasn't he very gay? Well, I don't know. Well, I, well, I think you he might know really that. gay. I, 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 I heard that he had like like two hundred tattoos, and he was like a sniper, and like like he was like this badass guy, and he just like did that show. I heard that. No. I don't know, dude. The fucking Tom Hanks movie totally lied. Which which movie? There's a Tom Hanks movie all about. Oh Mr. right, Rogers. right. Yeah, I never what saw. The it. Fuck, dude, yeah. seriously. Welcome to the neighborhood. Or yeah. Something. Well, we, we do apologize. We've been gone for yeah, over a month. We've got some rust. Dude had a fucking heart surgery. Yeah. Uh, my dad's health took a like quick turn for the worst. Yeah. And like a couple of weeks after his heart surgery, my dad passed away. So it's been about three weeks since my dad passed away. Um, hence us being gone for a while. A yeah. while. Hence the new uh, set backdrop the, the here. Golf clap. Thank golf you. Golf clap for Thank the you. set. This is like, we, we started this podcast um, in your car. Yep. In a parking lot, not at Amazon, where we didn't work together. Not in Kitsap County, no. not at DSC 8, not no. near the Bremerton Airport, not, so, nowhere near there. So that means that, you know, we're, we're, we're slowly evolving here. Like, we're not evolving, but like everything else around us is. Yeah. So I, I'm so impressed with the whole setup you've got here. Really. So, and welcome yeah. to episode 19, finally. Yes. We were pumping out episodes there for a while. But <laughs> er, everything yeah. stopped. So. Well, we, we had to take some time off because some heavy stuff came up yeah. with your dad. And then um, I had a heart operation and took a little time off of work. I switched I switched companies. I uh, went down to California for a while. And um, now we're back and we're, we're ready to go. Hell yeah. yeah. The fourth iteration and never better. Yeah. So, right. well, welcome to the IRL podcast. This is real life, and we are not NPCs. This no, is not. not a simulation. And one thing I know for fucking certain, that we never, ever, 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 ever. Glitch at all. Never. No. Not even a little bit. No. That was I never. Know, I don't know why people say that. I it's really not know. nearly identical to the ones we never do on no. every other episode. <clears throat> but I am your host, that guy named Mike. And to my right, my right-hand man. He is my hetero life mate. He is the silent Bob to my Jay, as it were. The Robin to my Batman. The fucking... <laughs> the, the Screech to my Zach Taylor. That might be my favorite one, actually. Me too. Yeah. The fucking... The radar to my Clinger. Well, that's because you wear dresses. We weren't supposed to talk about... Oh, anyway, oh, well, sorry. you're the only one that we have proof well, in doing that. that that's true. That's but, true. I, I wore mean, a Seahawks dress because the fucking Niners lost in the Seahawks. You know, the last time the Niners lost, which was like, what, 15 years ago? Oh, I have this like scratch right here on the side of my face. Yeah. Anyway, and also the Cagney to my Lacey. Oh, I love so, it. So, and it is that guy. I'm Greg. The other guy named. I, I'm Greg, and I'm supposed to open up a beverage at this point, but I yeah. don't, I, we're going to prove that we're differently abled right now. Yeah, I was going to say we're differently abled. I don't know how to open this. And it's, we are not sponsored by Carbonated. What the fuck is that? Ramuni? Ramuni? Ramuni drink? We're dumb white people. Yuzu, I thought this was from your people. Yuzu. Uh, you should flavor. know how to pronounce this. I, I, I should. Disappointed. I should. People this, are disappointed well, you know. since I am, you know, I may or may not be 25%, you know, uh, what, what are you supposed to say? Yella? Uh, Oriental? Of Asian descent. Of Asian descent. Wow. You went like, <laughs> hey, you know, depending your age, Yella just meant cowardly. That's right. So um, not not a racial pejorative. So I'm, I'm going to try to open this. Now I'm supposed to take like, like, I don't know how to open this. What the directions say? I, I just, I, well, I, I, I fucked up the directions. So, okay. Yeah. You're supposed to drink the, or read Plan. the directions before you drink the drink. Plan B. There we go. That's Merca. Yeah. Merca right there. Yeah. That's what the M stands this for. Is, this Moronically is reserve, Merca. This is reserve monster. Wow. Yeah. So they let it age in whiskey or, barrels or, or for another year? Trimsical. Mm. Yeah. What do you Come. got? Oh, I have good old fucking uh, Michelob Ultra. Nice. Because I'm trying to keep my sexy yes, girly figure. You, you want to keep your girly yes. figure. That's right. So cheers. Cheers, brother. 
And this is like, welcome back. You mm -hmm. know, we're never going to get sponsored. Never. But anyway, our first episode back. Uh, there's a lot of crazy, crazy shit going on in the world. Yeah, there is a lot of crazy, a lot, shit a, lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, people against each other. Yes, you know, and, a lot of crazy political shit going on. Yeah, I mean, we've got the, we've got you know Israel squaring off against Palestine. Uh, got, Ukraine's starting to take it to fucking Russia. They, are, they actually took over some uh, Russian cities and are holding yeah, them. Yeah, that's getting nuts. But you know, we all, that's why you guys can always depend on us to get you completely distracted from all that shit yeah. with things that don't really fucking matter at all. Yeah. So, so, I mean, we can be a hard hitting uh, news source for everyone and we tackle the, the tough subjects here too. Sometimes. We do. So if, if we were news, we would be like a nitrous oxide hit to your head of news because right. a, we're not really news and we're going to kill some brain cells in the process. Yeah, We would be uh, helium in a balloon. Exactly. We're so, Greg, before we get to Greg has a top eight list. Um, yeah. It's I get it's the sitcoms, the the top eight sitcoms of all time. The top eight sitcoms of all time. Yeah, but because we're old and because my father just passed away and we were cleaning a lot of things around Ooh. here and I was going through boxes and shit, I found a giant book of lies. Oh, and I would just like you to share this with you. This this I you did not tell me about. Okay, this. so Fine. this is the cookbook. That came with the very first microwave my family ever owned in 1982. Wow. And it says, successful microwaving with Toshiba. Because we know Toshiba. Toshiba. They are the fucking master craftsmen of microwave cutting, fine dining. Cutting edge right? of food. So when you, was, when, you think, when you think of fine dining, maybe a Michelin star, yes. you think Toshiba. You think fucking Toshiba microwave. And then... I love how like the first couple of pages, like, hey, look at all the accessories you need to make your food good that don't come with your microwave. That's going to cost a lot of money for you to buy. Wow. How about, so, I bet you the yeah. microwave was like, like fucking $500. I think too. my dad spent about 400 bucks on our very first microwave and yeah. it had two dials. Right. So no push buttons. Right. The TV had dials. Microwave had right. dials as this, well. Do they say a minute? Okay. A minute's about right there. Yeah. So yeah. the first thing I would like to point out about this fucking book is the meat section. Okay. Book of lies. Because. Book of lies. Yeah, because you want to put your meat in the microwave. Yes. And so look at these beautiful pictures here, Greg. Look at the gorgeous fucking Those color. Nice. The caramelization. If you're a cook and you're a professional cook, the Maillard effect. The Maillard effect is basically what you call caramelization. The golden I, brown, I, right? I, that's so high end that I don't even know what that is. So Dr. Maillard was trying to figure out why stuff that turned golden brown tasted better than stuff that wasn't golden brown. Okay. And what he figured out was when you cook stuff to a certain point, right before it burns, it releases all the sugars and caramelizes. That's why it's the caramelization. Okay. Hence the Maillard effect. Sure. Right. Sure. So anybody who's ever put a fucking pork chop or a piece of chicken in a fucking microwave knows for a fucking fact that shit comes out fucking steamy, gray, and rubbery as fuck. There ain't no goddamn way you're getting my artifact and caramelization on this fucking shit. Lies, lies, unmotherfucking fettered lies. Okay, so I, I need to interject right here because <coughs> back when I was a world class <laughs> alcoholic, I would take a, a chicken, like a raw chicken breast, and put it in the microwave for like five minutes. And it would come out, and the outsides would be a color not found in nature, and it exactly. would be like all fucking split and stuff. Yep. And it would be about two hundred degrees hotter than the inside of the chicken. Exactly, dude. Yeah. One hundred percent. Which means everything in this picture one hundred percent bullshit. Lies. Lies. This is nineteen eight. You guys think fake news is a thing now? Mm. You realize I was a fucking little kid, man. I had a fucking step mom who thought she could make shit like this by putting it in a fucking microwave. So, so me and my fucking stepsister spent 10 years of our lives eating the worst possible food you could because she couldn't figure out why she couldn't make that ham look like that by putting it in a microwave. Or these perfectly fucking perfectly roasted chickens 
Like, how come it's coming out gray and rubbery? Yeah, but okay. Like the line, the, the pictures aren't telling me the truth. Okay, let me let me ask you Everybody this. Everybody knows you could cook a pecan pie like that <laughs> in a fucking microwave, okay, right? Let me, let me ask you this. The fuck? So, so your family was of limited means, just like my family was. Indeed. So they put this shit in the microwave, and then it comes out horrible. Guess what? You got to eat it anyway. Uh, precisely, because yeah. my dad was like, motherfucker, you know how many hours I worked today to pay for that goddamn food? I didn't food? work. Eat it. I it. didn't work 25 hours you. a day for you to yeah. turn your nose up at the food that's ready for you. Another bullshit one is these motherfuckers are wrapping meat in foil. Foil. You you put foil in a microwave, right? Yeah. You see what happens? It yeah. sparks. Right. Yeah. You don't put foil in a fucking microwave. Who the fuck? This is in their cookbook. <laughs> They're like, hey, you want to blow your microwave up and buy another microwave? Follow our directions and put foil on your fucking meat. What the fuck, dude? Um, just that, the that, asininity of this that, fucking thing is just me, remarkable, dude. That, look at, it's got like really specific measurements and like this is like scientific y fucking like professional chef listen, shit. This, this is just bullshit to fucking legitimize their lives if you don't know anything about microwaves, this is like a treasure yeah right because you oh do all these things i had to share this with all of our fucking 109 followers <laughs> because I so most of them are gen x like us well 106 of our followers really? are right your, here did your mom ever make a ham like that coming out of the microwave well i didn't we didn't have a microwave when i grew up my parents bought a microwave when i went to college like we, I you know, I okay. have a microwave all through fucking high school. So yeah, the fact that I know that you grew up like Sandlot, yeah, but I also picture you living like Oliver Twist, like <laughs> in a garage, and like your bed is a cot, and like you have like a chicken on a spindle over a fucking furnace. I'm just yeah, my, so again, my, lies, 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 lies. Yeah, like, let's just you know what you got to do when you microwave it. You got to put some butter on it, and then it comes out perfectly golden brown. Right. Well, you know, yeah. No, I grew up. Bullshit. When I grew up, my my room was the garage, the converted garage that had no insulation at all, and I could see my. This isn't one of those like old timey things, but I I could see my breath sometimes when I woke up, and we didn't have a heater in the house at all. We had no heater and no AC, so I had to have like fucking eight blankets on me when I I slept in the winter. And he would stumble into the yeah. kitchen with his fucking fingerless gloves and be like, "Excuse me, mom, can I please have some more?" And, and she'd but, be like, "Here's your cold pancake." Ah, uh, yes, I was gonna say. <laughs> Pancake, pancake, pancake. Are we still doing I that? hope those are on screen. Okay. Yeah, no, because like if they're on screen, I'm, if not, I'm just going to put them over our faces. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So anyway, enough of this shit. I just, I had to share this goddamn giant book of lies wow. with everyone. Toshiba Microwaves, the masters of microwave cuisine. Wow. Just fucking horse shit. Wow. But hey, you know what? My kids had to fucking grow up with Easy Mac. So... <laughs> And then we wonder why, how come everybody has gluten allergies and obesity? It's like, because we fucking grew up with Easy Mac and Toshiba microwave cooking. Yeah. Then you wonder why we all went to fast food. Because our moms were cooking this shit. Yeah. Wow. My, my stepmom was definitely not fucking uh, some goddamn fucking 1980s fucking chef. Actually, when I was growing up, we had um, like the dinner time was like the only time that the four of us would sit down mm -hmm. and we had like candles and real napkins like like every night. <laughs> Jesus <Christ. laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. I literally Hellscape. I literally just pictured little Oliver Twist and Greg <laughs> around the fucking little house in the prairie table. The really fucking old man Charles has a fucking lamp on and shit with the candles and mom's like, you guys say grace before we eat supper? <laughs> <laughs> so here's, Hellscape. here's you guys you know you can't say you didn't miss it. Missed. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you I, you I do. I did miss this time. Um, no, I, that reminds me of like there's a painting by Van Gogh called the Potato Eaters. You can find it right here. No, you have to look that up. I'm but that's that's kind of like yeah. how that's that's what I described when I was growing up. So <laughs> potato eaters. Yeah. So before we get onto the list, we have three brand new sauces that we have not introduced to the show yet that we may may or may not put on the wheel of pain. Yeah depending on their level of pain. So the first one we're going to try is T Tingly Ted's. So did you know the movie Ted? Yeah. With Mark Wahlberg and, the, and oh. Seth MacFarlane that plays the teddy bear? Suck your asshole or something? Yeah, this is their sauce. Oh, is it? Yes, and it's it's a little extra tingly. Here's, here's, here's father of the year stuff for me. I took my 
preteen kids to see that movie in the theater. Oh my god! Dude, and, then, so, and then for like two years, all we would say to each other was "suck your asshole" or something. Like we we quoted that movie so much, like the swearing and everything. And my kids are like like eleven and thirteen at that point, and so yeah. So here we go. I try. I was gonna watch that movie with Kim. Yeah, and then. Uh, she got like the gist of what the movie was about. Yeah. And she was like, absolutely not. I will not watch that movie. And if you watch that movie, I will lose respect for you. Okay. So, okay. So before we have this, I do have to say <coughs> that I've been going through some gastrointestinal issues. It just there, makes it more fun for there me. There is at, le- I, I live about like 25 minutes away. There is at least a 51% chance that I will shit myself on the way home. So we, no, Dude, I'm not even kidding. Content. Okay. We're going to start a new segment called It's Been This Many Days Since the Last Time Gregor Shit Himself. Okay. We Let's might start, start that now. episode. How many days? You want to start that segment right now? Yeah, sure. let's do it right now. How many days? I, that's not even hot at all. No, I told you thing. It reminds me of A1 steak sauce. A little sweeter. Okay. It's not hot. It's just delicious. Yeah. So, n- yummy sauce. Not wheel of pain worthy. No, so because there's no pain. It's just all about flavor. So, um, so ask me how many days it's been today since since I shit myself. How many? I think it's been three. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Before you get into it. Okay. Sauce number two. Hell's habanero sauce has a little picture of a demon. So okay. Go. All right. So um, this last time I shit myself, it wasn't a big deal. Um, I was I was taking a piss in the middle of the night, and I should not have trusted that fart. So it was I, electric, I just, had a little juice to it. A little juice. So I, I, I shit myself while I was pissing. So that doesn't really count. All right. But the time before that, about, I don't know, maybe a month ago, <laughs> you know, a month ago, um, I woke up in the middle of the night going, God, what is that smell? Like my, I, I shit myself in my sleep, and the smell woke me up. Oh my god! Yeah, man. so I, so it's like two in the morning, and I, I, I go in the bathroom, and I'm, I, it's, it's like I had a front to back when my kids were little, and they had a, a blowout. We call it a front to backer, mm-hmm. and I, I had a front to backer, like as a fucking fifty five year old man. Well, it's front door to back door, yeah, yeah. So I got in the shower, you know, tore off everything with the nozzle. You know, might have spent a little bit too much time on the on my undercarriage. You know, on my on the bottom of my scrope. You know, you know making sure my tank was clean. After three strokes, you're just playing with it. Yeah, you're on vacation. Yeah. So, so this actually oh, has some heat to it. But here's the thing: I usually just wear like underwear, or, like regular shorts. Ooh, this one has a little kick. That's what I'm saying. That night, for whatever reason, I decided. To wear like real pajama pants, like flannel. <laughs> so they held firm. They held fast. Now, not unlike they are very absorbent. Not They're the un- most absorbent of pajama pants. So the so the brawny of pajama the, pants. The brawny, yeah. yeah. It, it's the quicker picker upper. Exactly. The quicker so, sugar sucker upper. So um, the sheets had to we had to change the sheets, <laughs> but the mattress was pristine. The mattress was pristine. nice. They as kept per- most of the liquidy the, stuff, right? The mattress was as pristine as it was before. As, as it was before. As before. Like the mattress. Not like, that previous, like there. previous yeah. taintings may not have already right. existed. Yeah. But, so, so this actually is pretty good, but it does have a little bit of heat. Yeah. Oh, see, it's the middle of the road. That makes sense. It's got so, a little heat measurer thing. So let me finish this. So the my pants held fast, not unlike the drunk Russian pi- pirate in the back of my car when I was Ubering in San Francisco. The pantaloons. The pantaloons. Have I told the story? Well, maybe next time. I don't know. We might have to revisit that story. Yeah. Right, so, this? it's only been three days. So, the next time we do the story, we're going to have to... This this would be zero. Yeah. We'll okay. have to count how this many days it's been. Okay. So, this is... Holy shit! Habanero sauce. I am not enthusiastic about this one. Um, this one was up there with a lot of the other hot ones on okay, Amazon. Let's do it. So here we go. All right. Nug it up. 
Okay, I'm gonna take a copious amount there. All right. That's All a lot. Right. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Boop. Cheese and flavor kind of sweet. A little smoky aftertaste. Yeah. Oh, here it comes. Doesn't seem too bad. Here it comes. No. Well, it's kind of it's a little slow creeper. It is, does have a smoky flavor, though. I'm kind of feeling a little bit of tingly in the back of my tongue. Mm -hmm. The back of the tongue is definitely uh, getting warmer. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a, a problem for the uvula. You know yeah. words. Yeah. I know words hmm. and such. Well, shit, man. No need to like scary hot. So we're gonna have to keep on, keep on searching. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know if any of those qualify for the wheel. Of Actually. Not hot enough. Oh. I'm not. I'm not thinking. Not punching a little in the face yet. So, but I do need to open this. It was also not sponsored by this truly unruly tropical twist. This, this, this one sticks around. Yeah. So, without further ado, top. Eight top top sitcoms eight sitcoms of all time. Of all time. And I'll put I, a banner up here. I printed out this list so long ago, I have no idea where I got it. Okay? The internet. Okay, so let's start. So it's got some old ones. It's got some new ones. Um, we will probably definitely have opinions on them. Number eight, Friends. Oh, wow. Friends is eight? Hey, Friends is eight. You know, I, wow. never, I never liked Friends when it was on because... Nobody is that good looking and that witty as a six person group. You're the Chandler Bong to my Joey. Okay. Oh, Chandler, I miss him. Yeah, he's dead. That was a name on the TV Guide subscription. Yeah. That he never paid for. Uh -huh. but the name was wrong. Oh, really? That's how he knew it was his. Oh, he okay. Was a, gotcha. To Chandler Bong. Gotcha. Number seven. Chandler Bong. Taxi. Okay. I used to love Taxi. Mm hmm Like the one, ooh, oh, that would hit me hard. Oh, like the, the I like the language. It's hot enough to remind you it's hot and habanero sauce, mm -hmm. but good enough to where you're like, oh, come back for more. That one, like, piggybacked off the last one. <laughs> taxi, okay. we, so. we were introduced to some major heavy hitters like, uh, like, um, what's a, what's a, Midget's name, the guy. Um, Louis De Palma. Louis De Palma, but no. Yeah, fucking Danny DeVito. Life. Danny DeVito. God damn, it's fucking Dolan's fucking hero, man. Danny DeVito right there. Yeah. All right. But now, Frank from fucking... It's always sunny. Oh, it's sunny. Our ass now. Yeah. Did you ever watch the movie Ruthless People? He was pretty good in that, too. Yeah. Number seven, The Office. Man. I can think of uh, my friends in the office and like that low. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what the top ones are now. So the office went through some uh, some some different uh, cast members. I when um, when was it Mike that left and then they brought in like uh, James and like Will Ferrell and stuff. Before they kinda, finally decided lost. on um, Andy. Yeah, I kind of lost it after that. Yeah. <clears throat> That was a show that I definitely binge watched for like a month. I think when Andy finally took over, uh -huh. that was probably closer to the the Michael Scott. Yeah, because like God the, man, I can't remember the actor's name. He's been in so many things. Ed Helms. Ed Helms. Yeah. So to me, that was perfect because yeah. if you guys remember the old school Daily Show. The original three correspondents. Yeah. yeah were right. Ed Helms. Um, and uh, the good Michael Scott. Like, Michael Scott, yeah. dude, right? Carell. Steve, Steve Carell. And, and Carole. Rob Corddry. Which one? Which one is he? The dude from Hot Tub Time Machine. The bald guy. Oh, Who's yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Everything that moves. Yeah, yeah. They were the three very first correspondents My, ever on The Daily Show. And My, they all went off to do big things. So right. for me, being a Daily Show fan, when... Steve Carell stopped being Michael Scott and yeah. they brought in Ed Helms as Andy. I was like, they're just passing the torch, dude. Yeah. They both came from the same comedy background and it just seemed perfect because 
all the other guys were just literally weird fill-ins to yeah. see how far they could push it. Right. Because Ed Helms at the time was doing movies like Cedar Rapids. I got an itch on my eye and I can't. Um, he was doing actually movies. Right. At the same time that they were doing all that. Right. So his access was very limited. Just like when Michael J. Fox was doing, it was like season three or season four of uh, Family <clears throat> Ties. Family Ties yeah. and was also doing uh, Back to the Future. Future movies. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know this, but there's a lot of scenes in Back to the Future where, dude, he's been up for like 18 hours. He wow. would literally go from the set from Family Ties. They'd throw him in a van. He would sleep. They would like put a sleeping bag and pillows and shit on the floor of the van. He would sleep on the freeway while driving him to the set of Back to the Future. No shit. He would wake up, drink coffee, get his fucking lines, go do a bunch of fucking scenes, and then back in the van, back asleep, back on his way home, go to bed for two or three hours, wake up, do family ties again. He was he was hot back. In, I mean, not hot like hot, but. Sure. Was, yeah, no, okay. you know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, Craig. Yeah, um, that's okay. Yeah, my right arm just my, no, my hand just I, cramped up for some reason. You know, you know, like with me and Chris Evans. I'm not gay. But if, if fucking Captain America came in for a kiss really slowly, yeah. I wouldn't back you away. You wouldn't right back away. away. Right. I'd be like, dream we Whoa, like, dude. Like if you had a, if you had a threesome. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. If you had a threesome with him, you wouldn't know who to look at. Yeah. No, no, I would be staring at him the whole time. Oh, okay, all right. Was, yeah, we were kidding. <laughs> yeah, Michael J. Fox back in the day was like a legit star. So, oh, yeah. I remember like the younger people don't know this, but back in the day, they had like teen pop magazines and like, yeah, Tiger these, Beat. Yeah, you had all these like little 12 to 16 year old girls that just wanted like it was basically like play, play girl for teenage girls, but all the, all the teenage boys had clothes on, right? But it was literally like the same, like, I'm leaning back on this pillowy couch with my fucking chest hair, and I'm, all, I'm fucking. 15 year old Charlie Sheen, but here's my chest hair. Like, right. dude, little girls are just like, why right. are things downstairs getting tingly? Right. Like, right. come on, dude. You have Jordan Knight and fucking all these fucking new kids and shit on your goddamn then, walls. You know, we they, know what you're doing when your light turns off. They end up, you know, beating the little man in the boat like it owes them. Yeah. Money. I mean, I had a little sister, and I hope she never sees this. <laughs> She'll just be like, what the fuck, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, I know your favorite was Jonathan. Jonathan Knight. She liked the oldest, most mature one. I, I always, I always, which give, I thought was weird. I always give my blushing bride shit about like falling in love with Leaf Garrett. And, like, <laughs> to... right. and she like, hey, it, it was a Justin Timberlake of the time. But, so. but the thing is, she never, she never liked him, mm -hmm. right? So I won't let it go because it's funnier now because she gets more and more pissed at me. Well, it's kind of our marriage. She just gets more and more pissed me all the time. No, I just it's kind of funny because Andy Gibb died too young. Yeah, he did. Oh, Andy Gibb. Almost the same guy. Hey, guys. So that's going to be the end of part one for this episode. I know there was a lot of weird audio glitch stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can try to figure something out for the part two. Uh, but thanks for joining us on episode 19, part one. Wait for part two. It's coming in just a couple of days. Peace.